to another episode of Frightfully Forgotten Halloween Special. Today we're going to bring to you a whole bunch of the Universal sort of Monster Mash movies where it was like, you know, a bunch of the Universal Monsters in one movie. Our original plan was to rank them, but here's the problem. They're all kind of the same damn movie. The original four black and white Monster Mash movies, one of them is good. And the first one is Frankenstein meets Wolfman. The story is not bad. The Wolfman wants to be cured. Yeah, which makes right? sense. Which makes sense, yeah. And it's like, it's one of the first ones where you see that he's actually suffering from this affliction yeah. and seeks help yeah. for it, right? And the sets are still pretty good. They're still pretty much the old school universal graveyard sets. The movie starts off really cool, yeah. like in the crypt. The biggest <laughs> thing about this movie really is the casting of Bela Lugosi as Frankenstein <laughs> is what really does the movie, I think, a lot of harm. <laughs> it reminds me of uh, Phil Hartman in like Saturday Night Live <laughs> yeah, or something yeah. and he's playing <laughs> Frankenstein. <laughs> it's all lousy. In the previous movie, Ghost of Frankenstein, ends with Frankenstein being blind because his brain transplant didn't work. <laughs> and he actually, they put the brain of Igor in Frankenstein, <laughs> so he has Belagosi's voice. It actually is Belagosi. <laughs> He's like, I am Igor! <laughs> it's all stupid. <laughs> and so it kind of makes sense that Frankenstein would have Belagosi's voice, but the fact that he's blind makes him totally useless in this movie. Totally useless. Like, how is that scary? It's some guy stumbling around. It's and so and it shouldn't really be called Frankenstein meets Wolfman. It should be like Frankenstein and Wolfman become buddies for a little bit and, and then, then have a tiff at the end. Yeah. <laughs> that's really what the movie is. And at the end, they fight for like two minutes. Blows up that dam or yeah. whatever. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah, yeah. And it's the end. Yeah. And it ends all quick. <laughs> Next, we have House of Frankenstein. Boris Karloff is in it. And he plays like this crazy scientist who escapes jail with his hunchback, you know, <laughs> companion. Happens to stumble upon this carnival guy who has like this kind of House of Horrors thing where he's got the skeleton of Dracula. He takes the stake out of Dracula and he comes to life. Right. Which is the screen debut of John Carradine as Dracula. The complete misuse of Dracula. <laughs> he comes to life for like 10 minutes and there's this chase scene where the villagers are chasing him and his carriage gets tipped <laughs> over and then like it's daylight and he tries to make it to his coffin and he just dies. Like, <laughs> Like, what, did, what was the <laughs> point? Totally useless. Yeah. And throughout that whole part of the movie, like, so where's the other monsters at this <laughs> point? <laughs> and then it becomes Frankenstein meets the Wolfman again. House of Frankenstein ends in basically the same way with a bunch of, you know, villagers coming to the castle <laughs> again and everything gets washed away again and then just the end again. <laughs> <laughs> Then we move into House of Dracula, Ooh. which is basically House of Frankenstein again. <laughs> John Carradine's in it a little bit longer as Dracula. It's kind of neat in terms of the fact that he wants to be cured too. But the thing is, then does he? he? Like, well, he that's kind the of thing. Because like... he kind of pulls that whole switcheroo around on that doctor guy. Yeah. Like he, where he puts his blood into... So why the fuck did he do that? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. The movie makes no sense. Yeah, it's like I thought he wanted to be cured, and he's and why? They don't really explain it that well. <laughs> then, the, like the whole Dracula character is just gone out of the movie. Yeah, just like it's in like... the House of Frankenstein, <laughs> he dies all shitty too. He runs down to his coffin, and like the guy just ch follows him <laughs> and just opens it up and kills him. Like, like it's, it's no like, fight it's at all. Cheap. <laughs> And then from there, it turns into Frankenstein versus Wolfman again for the third time. Yeah, because yeah, they fight in that laboratory, yeah. and then that mad scientist guy's all getting into the mix, too. Super ridiculous. The only redeeming thing about this movie really is the fact that Lawrence Talbot actually, at the end, finally gets cured of Curse of the Wolf. Finally has, like, more of a finite ending. But then it still ends with the laboratory <laughs> blowing up and everything, and this suddenly the end yeah. again. <laughs> Exactly. House of Frankenstein and House of Dracula both have Glenn Strange playing mm. Frankenstein for the first time. And it's he's actually does a really good job. He's way better than way better than <laughs> Bella Lugosi. Yeah. He's better than Lon Chaney Jr. 
as Frankenstein in Ghost of Frankenstein. He definitely looks the most like Boris Karloff. Yeah. I was thinking that these movies are kind of ahead of their time mm. as being the first ever crappy cookie cutter sequel thing. It's like way before Friday the 13th was really the first kind of cookie cutter, the same movie over and over yeah. franchise sequel. Well, this was way before that, and it's the same thing. Yeah. It's the same thing over and over again. The only really good thing about all those three, I think, is the continuity is pretty good as far mm -hmm. as the Wolfman and Frankenstein storyline. They really stick to what happened in the previous movie. So that brings us to probably the best of the original black and white Monster Mash movies. Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein. <laughs> It's fun. It's yeah. just a fun movie. Yeah. You don't have to think too much about it. Bela Lugosi is finally back playing Dracula for only the second time in his career. I, I thought he did a better job in this than he did in the original Dracula. Yeah. Actually. <laughs> <laughs> and it's actually the only movie of all those four Monster Mash movies where all three monsters are in the same building mm. at the same time. The sets are awesome. Yeah. For like... You'd think for like an Abbott and Costello movie, you'd think cheap. No, it's like, man, this is a top-notch fucking movie. Yeah. Like, they put a lot of money into it. And it's smart. The writing is so smart. <laughs> yeah. The dialogue is so smart. And they did a great job of taking the monsters and weaving them in the typical Abbott and Costello routine. <laughs> yeah. They just work so well together, you know? The coffin going up and seeing that... Mm -hmm. Candle and that old Jack! Jack! <laughs> what? What is it? Now, after seeing three movies before with Lawrence Talbot being, in 20 minutes, <laughs> the moon will be full and I'll be a wolf again. <laughs> it's funny because it's the fourth time it Now it works! Now it works! Now it works. Finally! <laughs> yeah, you and 20 other men. <laughs> yeah. Listen! He's all shoving him in that locker. <laughs> But at the end, the Invisible Man shows yeah, up. Yeah, that's too. right. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure the voice is Vincent Price. It is, yeah. It's also the first movie where actually where Jack Pierce doesn't do any of the makeup for any of the monsters, and it shows. Yeah, because they all look cheaper. Still, the the effects though in the movie are top notch. Yeah. Like you know, Dracula turning into the bat and back. Yeah. It's like cartoonish or yeah. whatever. Like it's a cartoon. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's still good. Like. I and, wish they would do shit like that now. And it works within the comedy context, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly, yeah. Definitely one of the best horror comedies of all time. Yeah. For 2004's Van Helsing is a Monster Mash movie. It's a universal movie that contains Dracula, Frankenstein's monster, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Yeah. Uh, werewolves, not the Wolfman, but werewolves. <laughs> starts black and white, you, the universal logo, black uh -huh. and white. I'm like, okay. Yeah, yeah, right away. Here we you know? go, and you see a bunch of villagers. It's black and white, and these villagers are coming. Like, oh, okay, I kind of, kind of digging this. And then, and then the CGI comes in, and <laughs> you know, I like how they pay homage to the original movie at the end with the, the windmill on fire at the end. And I'm like, oh, that's kind of neat. And Frankenstein's like holding Doctor Frankenstein. Is that kind of? You know, poetic a little bit. A little, yeah. And then he starts talking. He's almost like operatic singing. He's like, please don't leave us alone. I'm like, <laughs> what the hell is this? Like, how did he learn to talk so quick, first yeah. of all? And so poetically, I and might why add. Why is he singing? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and from there on. That's stupid. I couldn't take the movie seriously. Yeah. And it just became a CGI fest. Yeah. Like, even the fucking... Like, London and all that, it's all CGI. Like, I I don't think that these guys ever stepped foot outside of the studio. There's so much action where it's boring. Like, they oversaturate you with action. The movie's like two and a half hours long <laughs> yeah. of that, of CGI monsters fighting. fighting. <laughs> like, oh, give me a break. And even Hugh Jackman's bad in it. And he's good in most things. Like, oh, man. Yeah. What a, and the guy who plays Dracula is like so lame. It's like Lord of the Rings is big at the time. So they're like, yeah. let's make a big epic style Lord of the Rings movie, but make it the universal monsters. Well, that's not what they are. Yeah, yeah. And like, nobody cared. And you want to mention The Mummy because it has yeah. Mr. Hyde in it. Yeah, yeah. So like the, the latest one with Tom Cruise. I knew exactly what it was going to be. Just a new piece of shit movie. Just yeah. like Van Helsing. I knew it. 
But I was curious, so I was figured, well, it came on Netflix, so I was like, okay, fine, I'll just watch it. It started okay, like, it started decent, and then it was just a steady decline downhill. Like, again, way too much CGI, storm happens in the desert, all CGI. And then fighting, like you mentioned in Van Helsing. There's just way too much fucking fighting. Yeah. Like, what is this, a Marvel movie? Well, yeah. that's what they're trying to that's do. That's what they're trying to do. And then Dr. Jekyll is in it too, played by uh, Russell Crowe. And like him and Tom Cruise are all fighting some big epic fight. Like, why? <laughs> that's just too much. It's just way too much. What's <laughs> funny about all this is we've covered five... Universal Monster Mash movies. Out of all those, only the one that's a good one is a comedy. Yeah, Abbott and Costello. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's fun. The rest are pretty fucking bad. <laughs> yeah, but you know, that being said, I'd still prefer the old ones as opposed to these new ones. Yeah, so now we're going to talk about some non-Universal Monster Mash movies, which are actually better than most of these Universal Monster Mash movies. And one of our favorites is Transylvania 6 5000. Transylvania 6 <laughs> 5000. Which again is a comedy. Yep. It's a monster mash movie, but none of these people are actually monsters or anything. They're like not that, the right? monsters. They're not the monsters, but they're also actually not monsters. Yeah. They're, they're just normal people. Who are mistaken for <laughs> the monsters. <laughs> yeah. Which is kind of interesting. Yeah, it's kinda of, it's a neat twist, yeah. right? Because like the whole movie, throughout the whole movie. You're led to believe that they're all the monsters. The monsters. Yeah. It's an underrated uh, horror comedy for sure. It's uh, yeah. the comedy is very deadpan, and I guess I don't think it translated at the time, but I, I think it still stands up. Michael Richards is fucking great. In it, and... <laughs> yeah, everybody's good in that yeah. movie. Like up and coming stars. Yeah, Jeff Goldblum. Jeff Goldblum. Ed uh, Begley Jr. plays a great straight man yeah, yeah. you know uh, gina davis put your face to my breast <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> tell me you love me too <laughs> <laughs> jeffrey jones yeah jeffrey jones as mayor lepescu <laughs> yeah. put this in my car <laughs> evidence <laughs> <laughs> nothing wrong with making a buck <laughs> again another great monster mash tv series and movies is the Munsters. Oh, yeah. Which is a comedy, again. You know, the Munsters ran for two <laughs> seasons and had two movies with the original cast, and it's all class act. Like, the writing is excellent. Yeah. You know, the comedy is fantastic. That's, that's what's funny about it. They're, they're monsters, but they're living a normal, normal life. life. Yeah, it's <laughs> great, you know. And that'll lead us to the last one that we're going to mention, and that is Monster Squad. Which is probably the best monster mash movie of all time yeah and it's a movie that when you watched it as a kid you kind of aspired to be like these yeah. kids you know and sort of okay i'd like to fight monsters they make it look cool it's not a universal movie and it's kind of neat how they had to like alter the designs of all the monsters just enough not to get sued, <laughs> sued to get their asses sued so you know frankenstein looks enough like frankenstein to know it's frankenstein but it's not the mm -hmm. Boris Karloff Frankenstein. It's actually Tom Noonan as Frankenstein. Yeah. <laughs> Phoebe. Yeah. Who is in uh, Manhunter, which we covered. The Wolfman looks fucking terrifying. All of them do, really. Yeah, the Gillman looks yeah. amazing. Yeah, it's, it's like crazy. Probably the best looking Gillman. And I think Dracula looks a little tacky. He kind of looks like he just got his costume off of like a Halloween <laughs> rack. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, he's got like the typical brooch yeah. thing. But his portrayal is terrifying you know mm -hmm. he's scary and he grabs phoebe and he picks her up by her face mm -hmm. give me the amulet you bitch mm -hmm. yeah it's awesome <laughs> it's great and it's it's funny because like i guess it's a kids movie but it's like a lot of stuff in it is not yeah. for kids yeah you know? like, it's got like a lot of serious stuff it's definitely i think the most beloved of the monster mash movies by far heartfelt movie you know there's that scene where they're kind of walking mm -hmm. and they're through the sunset with frankenstein and yeah like oh <laughs> yeah. where do you get that kind of stuff nowadays an yeah. hour and 20 lo minute long movie that yeah. manages to make a point like that yeah that quick yeah that quick it's impossible now it's like movies are double that and they they're all garbage no they substance can't, yeah, yeah they can't do anything yeah. in it yeah. so i think that's it more of a discussion on the monster mash movies and how they're mostly shit <laughs> yeah. all the comedies are the best ones exactly yeah
Till the next time, keep drinking. drinking.